Finally, we're on to Venus as a Vashtas. So to start with, I'm going to cover the Sun starving Venus and the Sun agitating Venus. I'm going to cover those in the same video to make it a little more simple. Now that we've gotten to Venus, we've covered three planets, the Sun, Moon, and Mercury. So the Mercury stage is testing the things out, and through the testing, through the experimentation, through the trial and error, through following our curiosity, through trying different things, we finally find out what works for us and what we need. And then we get to the Venus stage. At the Venus stage is where we commit to something. And we say, yeah, this is actually what I need. I need to have this as part of my life. Having it as part of my life, the rest of my life is going to get better. Okay? And you know it's good. You know it's valuable. Venus is the planet of value. It's the things you're really willing to pay for. So at the Venus stage, not only do we make that decision, that commitment, we also engage in taking care of that thing. Because nothing in this world lasts forever, right? That everything in this world is in a constant state of breakdown and repair, breakdown and repair. So the things in our life that are valuable, that are important to us, we have to maintain them too. Okay? So, you know, we have to keep them you know, we have to be conscious of what they need to be maintained. Okay, so, like say you finally decide where you're going to live, you buy the house that's going to serve your purposes, and you get that house, and it's valuable to you, and you're willing to pay for it. Well, now you have to maintain it. You have to be aware, oh, the roof is leaking. And once you realize the roof is leaking by paying attention to it, and uh, relating to it, and attuning yourselves to it, by noticing it, then, you'll go on to Mars and you'll get out your hammer and fix the leaky roof or whatever. Okay? So the Venus stage is the stage where we realize the importance of that thing and how much we need it and therefore we're willing to do what it takes to keep it. And also, we take care of the thing, we're conscious of the thing, we pay attention to the thing so we know what its needs are as well. And then the Mars stage, we go do the hard work to fulfill those needs. Okay. So it's such as a very important stage, the Venus stage. Now, we don't engage with the Venus stage with lots of things. Like with the Mercury stage, we're dealing with so many things. I try this, I try this, I try this. Try a hundred things, keep one. The Venus stage is the one thing you keep. Okay. So, if Venus isn't good of Ashtas, you find the things that, yeah, I need this, this makes my life better and you take care of those things. Okay? If Venus is not in good shape, you're not really finding things that work for you, that are really right for you. You can make commitments to things that end up not working for you, that eventually you don't take care of you, or you're unable to take care of. Something that's just not working. Okay? And you run into all kinds of long-term problems. But we don't deal with tons of Venus things. It's like a long period of time on one Venus thing. Okay, we're taking Venus as the fourth planet from the Sun in this system, in this class on Abashtas. And so that Venus is number four, four stable things. These are long-term things. Okay? So Venus has to do with our ability to work with the long-term things, the things that we decided to keep. Okay? We can't just toss those things away. Venus is marriage, is the most common example. You know, you buy that thing, or sorry, you invest in that marriage, you commit to it, and you can't just throw it away in a week because it didn't work. All that testing needed to be done in the Mercury stage. Okay. All right. So specifically, when the Sun is um, starving Venus, that's going to most commonly happen when the Sun is in Leo, or sorry, when Venus is in Leo. Okay. It can also happen by aspect, but only up to nine Virupas out of sixty, nine points out of sixty. So the aspect of the Sun on Venus will never be enough that it's going to be a big deal in the person's life, okay? Now, if Venus has no other influences on it, and it has a little bit of an aspect of the Sun, then yeah, that's the biggest problem of Venus, but it's not going to be hugely holding them back. But Venus and Leo will be a noticeable issue, okay? The Sun joining Venus will also be a noticeable and difficult issue. Okay, not only will it starve Venus, the Sun will also agitate Venus, which is a more intense form of starvation when it happens with the Sun. So, 
Those are difficult Venus positions. The Sun joining Venus, starving and agitating it, is very common. It's one of the reasons we have a disharmonies in, in the world, one of the prevailing reasons. It's not as common as the Sun-Mercury that I talked about in a previous video, but it happens almost as often, a little bit less than a third of the time, whereas the Mercury happens somewhat more than a third of the time. Okay. So let's just take the easy one. If Venus is in Leo, or has some aspect of the Sun, but again the aspects are going to just be taking this to a slight degree. So mostly when Venus is in Leo, it's simply and purely starved by the Sun. Okay? So what the Sun does, the Sun goes, this is my kingdom, I'm going to take care of my kingdom, I'm going to build my kingdom, I'm going to be responsible for my kingdom, and I'm going to make the kingdom in, my, in the image of my mind. This is my kingdom after all. I get to design it. I get to build it. I get to rule it. Okay? And then we stick Venus and Leo in the kingdom. So now this Venus thing, which is never meant to be part of your personal kingdom, becomes part of your personal kingdom. Okay? Venus is meant to be, you know, something that comes in your kingdom and leaves. It comes in the gate and it walks out the gate into its own kingdom. All the people in the world that we come across, they all have their own kingdoms. They may have tiny, tiny little kingdoms, or they might be giant kingdoms, but they're going to have their own kingdoms. All right? And the problem when Venus is starved, when it's in Leo, is the person doesn't realize that that person exists outside of their kingdom. Okay? So there's a bad habit of when it comes to the people in their life, the people that they commit to or want to commit to, to be responsible for those people and to think that those people are part of their kingdom. So they treat those people in a way that is, you're, my, you're part of my kingdom. I'm in control somehow. Okay, somehow certain things have to happen according to my dictates. And they don't see the person as having their own kingdom. Okay? So, as an example, one person, one client has Venus and Leo, okay? Now, um, the, they've been struggling with their boyfriend. They're struggling with their boyfriend because they're, they're upset at the life their boyfriend has outside of them. They don't like the friend, that their, their boyfriend spends so much time with their friends and so on. Now, some of their complaints are legitimate, but there's also this part that they just don't want that person have a key, having a kingdom outside of themselves, outside of their kingdom. Okay, they feel um, they feel hurt when the person steps into their kingdom and lives their life. Okay, and then the person is really there for that person though. The the person with the Venus star is really there for that person. They're responsible for that person. They take care of that person because you take care of your kingdom, right? So on the one hand, the Venus in Leo is very loving. On the other hand, the Venus in Leo is like, wait, that's not accepted in my kingdom. No, that's not allowed according to my vision of life, my vision of the relationship. Okay? And so there's no tolerance for things outside of the Venus in Leo's um, vision of how things are supposed to be. Because again, the sun is the vision of your kingdom, okay? And so, instead of really truly seeing a person, seeing a person's needs, working with a person, what happens is the Venus in Leo sees it all from the point of view of their kingdom. And so ultimately, there's no room for the other person to have a real relationship, okay? They can be, a, they can be someone in the kingdom who belongs to that kingdom and is for that kingdom, or the person can leave. And usually they'll end up having to leave. Again, when Venus is starved, um, when it's in Leo, it doesn't help your relationship life. Okay, It's a difficult relationship position. Now classically, a lot of astrologers like to say that Venus and Leo is very proud in their love life. Yeah, you can say that to a degree, but I hope you can see the, the reason for this. It's proud in the sense of, how would you, why would you want to do that with them when you could do it with me? It's like saying, why do you want to go into that kingdom? You belong in this kingdom. It's that kind of pride. It's based on their idea that you belong to my world. 
Okay? Now, a Venus person doesn't belong to your world ever. That's what this Venus and Leo person needs to understand. A Venus person comes into your world to share, but they don't belong to your world. They belong to their own world. That's what makes a Venus person a wonderful person to have in your life, is you get two worlds get to come together and exchange. If they belonged in your world, they would have nothing to offer you. Not really. Venus has things to offer each other people because it comes from its own world, with its own value, with its own goodies, and now it comes into your world and it shares with you. Okay? So the Venus and Leo person doesn't get that. They're in this idea that the people in my life belong in my world. Okay? They're part of my world. That's how they see it. Okay? And then trying to relate and build a life from that point of view always ends up in disaster. Because the reality is the person that isn't part of your world. It isn't of your world. They share their world with your world. And that's a big difference. Okay? So when a person this, has this idea that the important people in their life belong in, you know, are part of their world, that they belong in their world, that they exist in their world, then of course everything they do is going to be based on that premise. All their expectations are going to be based on their premise. All the things they're going to try to do are going to be based on that. They're going to be very responsible for that person. They're very much going to take care of that person. Because that's what you do. You take care of your kingdom, right? That's what the sun is supposed to do. But when it's influencing Venus by Venus being in Leo, you're taking care of someone else that has their own kingdom, their own world to get taken care of. Okay? Not that you won't share in taking care, but it's not about all that. That's, it's not 100% that, the way the Venus in Leo person feels it is. Okay? And then, of course, with that comes no acceptance for anything that's not permitted in the Venus and Leo person's kingdom. Oh, that's not allowed in my kingdom. Go away. Okay? You're not allowed. I don't even want you in my life at all because that's not allowed in my kingdom. Or you can come through the kingdom. You can come into my kingdom, but you can't bring that with you. But that's not, doesn't work all the time. Um, I've seen Venus and Leo people, when they try to get into a relationship and they want to have kids and someone else has a kid, Okay, and they meet and they like that person a lot, but they don't want the other person's kid. They're like, no, I just want you to come here and give me my kids for my kingdom. I'm not interested in, you know, the princes of the other kingdom. They don't want those princes in their kingdom. Okay, so that's sort of the nature of the when Venus gets starved in Leo. Okay, so instead of acting, you know, with people, we need to always act out of our inner voice. We have to listen to our internal yeses and nos. When should we do this with them? Should we do that with them? And it's a constant adjustment. It's a constant change. One, one day you, do, you get your inner voice says, yes, do this with this person. The next day it says, don't do this with that person. Because both people need to do other things. Okay? Um, so moment by moment we need to figure out what we're doing with people. The details of what we're figuring out. So even after we make that Venus commitment of, okay, we're going to be together. Moment by moment, nobody truly knows what that means. Moment by moment, that's a process of finding out what's, what's the right thing to do now, what's the right thing to do tomorrow, we'll find out tomorrow. And we live our lives, you know, step by step in a committed place. Okay? But if, when, you know, when Venus is in um, Leo, the person is not able to listen to that inner voice because there's this idea that this is how my relationship has to work. This is how the person has to be. These are things I accept in my kingdom. And if the person's not being this, it's automatically a no. Okay? But the reality is, a person may, your know, inner voice might be saying, yes, share with me, share your kingdom with mine, have a relationship with me, have a give and take, that's value of both of us. But the Venus and Leo will say, oh, but you're a smoker, go away. You know, it'll just have these rules, you know. That I, don't, I don't allow this in my kingdom, you can't be part of my kingdom. But the person's not there to be part of your kingdom. They're there to share their kingdom with yours, okay. Um, it's funny in all the ways that this will happen. 
Okay. Um, you'll also see this influence when the sun is with Venus and it starves it that way. Okay. But it gets a little more intense because um, when you got the agitated avashta, you've got this thing called um, when the when then you get the agitation. That means you get really frustrated and you try to control and dictate things more to make sure things work. Okay. But what's really interesting about the sun agitating Venus when they're joined together in the same sign is that. Um, Oh gosh, forgetting the right, right words. Okay, so is that the sun? Okay, that's what I wanted to mention. An agitated planet is always felt as incompatible. So you remember in the beginning of this course when I talked about agitation, I was like, it always feels incompatible. There's always an incompatibility here. Okay, so. Why is that incompatibility here with the Sun-Venus conjunction? Okay, the reason is because the idea, person goes, this is my kingdom, this is what my kingdom is, nothing's allowed in here that doesn't fulfill these details. Okay? And then a person comes along from their own kingdom. And because they come from their own kingdom, they have differences, right? They're just going to have differences. Because people, everyone's kingdom is different, right? Everyone's life has different things of greater or lesser importance, you know? Everyone's life has somewhat different recreation, you know? Everyone's kingdom, the things that they have to build in this world, the way they have to be this world, the kind of person they want to be in this world, the kind of king they want to be in their kingdom, is different. So the minute someone shows up at the door of your kingdom and wants to share with you, they're coming from a different kingdom, okay? That's why they're all the seventh house, whether it's a business partner or a marriage partner, it's the seventh house. It's a, it's a far away place. Seventh house rules foreign lands, right? They're effectively coming from a foreign kingdom. Their kingdom is not the mirror image of your kingdom. And so with this agitation, with the sun telling Venus, all right, the person that you're going to share your kingdom with, the people you're going to share with, they have to be, they have to fit your kingdom 100%. They have to think like you, dress like you, behave like you, do the things you like to do, eat like you, whatever. Okay? They have to fit into this kingdom like they were born there. The only problem is, they were born in another kingdom. They were born in their kingdom. Okay? And so immediately, from that point of view, they'll be incompatible. So the sun agitating Venus makes everyone incompatible. Everyone's felt as incompatible to a sun agitating Venus person because they don't understand or accept or both that their kingdom is the way it is and other, everyone else's kingdom is different and they have to learn how to share with kingdoms, with people's lives that are completely different than theirs, that have somewhat different value systems, somewhat different dietary needs, somewhat different addictions, somewhat different ideas of what fun is, whatever the case may be, okay? That they have, they come from a different place and therefore they won't be the same. You can't just drop them into your kingdom and they'll just go, oh yeah, I was born here, I fit in just right. No, they're different. And therefore they're going to be seen as heavily incompatible by the sun Venus person, okay? The, the sun agitating Venus person. So just like that starvation, of it's the same thing that's happening with the sun starving Venus when Venus is in Leo. But along with it comes this overwhelming feeling of, this person's not compatible with me, this person doesn't fit me. And they're frustrated and agitated and stressed because the people just aren't compatible. But they may be compatible. They might actually be. But they're never felt as compatible as long as the person has the idea that the important people in my life, the Venus people, the people I'm going to have win-win relationships with, the people I want to share something valuable to me for something that's valuable with them, as long as we think they're, they have to be the same, that they have to fit into our kingdom perfectly, they're going to be felt as incompatible. 
And so instead of listening to the inner voice and saying, yeah, this person needs to share in my kingdom, let them in my kingdom, or no, don't let this person in my kingdom. I don't, my inner voice says no, I don't need to share with that person. Instead of our inner voice making the decision, our higher wisdom figuring it out, instead we go, oh no, that's not allowed in my kingdom. I can't, I can't commit to you. Okay? Or, wow, that's allowed in my kingdom and that's allowed in my kingdom. My kingdom loves that, so I'll commit to you. But their inner voice is saying, don't. You know, and you don't hear the inner voice when you're bait going off this agitation and starvation of the sun on Venus. Okay? So, this avashta is very common. The good thing about it it's not a heavily traumatized avashta. That's the wonderful thing about when the sun starves or agitates anything. It's not a heavily traumatized avashta. Okay? When Saturn's causing a bad avashta through conjunction, there's this huge trauma there. Until that trauma gets healed, you can't work your way through the avashta. But with the sun, there's no trauma there. You just have a wrong idea. Okay, you have a conception that's incorrect. Okay? And so as soon as you change that wrong idea, things can start working for you. There's, there's not a boatload of trauma to resolve. Okay? So just like the Sun Mercury, it's not that difficult to resolve. Neither is the Sun Venus. It's much, much easier to resolve than a Saturn Venus. Okay? or Saturn Mercury, which have trauma attached, okay? So, how do we resolve it? Again, by understanding the truth. Everyone has their own kingdom, and we have to share with the ones that our inner voice says share with. So, instead of evaluating and making decisions on people because of how they're not conforming to the rules of your kingdom, and the vision of your life, which is your kingdom, Learn to listen to your inner voice and let your inner voice pick the people and say, yes, I need to do something with this person. No, I don't need to do something with that person. Okay? And instead of letting the, oh, this person fits into my kingdom, therefore I'll do something with them. And oh, this person doesn't fit in my kingdom, so I won't do anything with them. That's not always the right way. In fact, if you think about it, Kingdoms that are the most different, that trade with each other, often offer each other the most benefit. Okay? What does someone really have to offer you? What, if they have exactly the same kingdom as you? What do they have to offer you? They can't offer you growth. They can't offer you anything. All they can offer you is the same thing you already got. You know, nobody wants the same that we already got. We, we're seeking that new thing that's going to spur us forward. Okay? So just by understanding this idea that we all have unique kingdoms and that the beauty of sharing with other people is that you're sharing with another kingdom um, is the attitude that needs to be developed. So if this happens in a sign where Venus gets, you know, delighted. So in the signs of Mercury, it's friend in the sign of um, Saturn, its friend, then the Sun-Venus agitation is going to be helped a lot by that benefit of um, the friend. Or if, of course, it happens in Libra or Taurus, where Venus gets its strength to do a better job. Or if it happens with the conjunction of Mercury. Okay, if Mercury is joined with Venus, um, then it's going to delight Venus and help the person make much better choices and deal with this much more effectively. So look for those things to help. So you'll see agitation where it's severe, which means, you know, the sun is with Venus and it's happening in the signs of Cancer, in the sign of Mars, or the sign of Leo. Okay, where Venus isn't getting any help, and Venus isn't with Mercury, and it doesn't have a good strong aspect of Saturn. Those would be the toughest ones. But the minute you get some benefit, some friendly benefit to Mercury, it of course will help things out. Okay, and later on I'll talk about other videos where we talk about, um, you know, Mercury being, um, <clears throat> I was saying Mercury delighting 
Venus. That's the most common fat thing that's going to help Venus out is Mercury, because they're close together in the sky, so they're conjunct a lot of the time. Okay? So when people have this avashta, the sun, Venus, they usually have grown up in a place where there's an element of dictatorship in their life. And what I mean by dictatorship, I mean there was an authority figure that was like, this is my kingdom, and this is how things are done in our world. And that really impacted that person strongly. Okay? Now, I've seen charts of people who have authoritarian figures, okay, and you look at the siblings. One has a Sun-Venus conjunction. The other one has a Saturn-Venus conjunction. And you're like, wait a minute. They both have issues with Venus, but one's a Saturn and one's a Sun. You won't always see that every child has a Sun. So they respond to that authoritative nature very differently, okay. The Sun-Venus person responds to authoritative nature by, wow, I am going to create my own kingdom. When I get out of here, I'm going to make my own kingdom. I'm going to build my own life and my vision, and no tyrant is going to sit up there and tell me I can't. Okay? So they get really focused on my kingdom. Except then when people come in, they see those people, but not as people with their own kingdoms and their complete own lives and their complete own identities, etc., etc., and their complete own abilities and their own army and, and servants at their disposal and their whole world at their disposal. They see those people as people to integrate into their kingdom, to take care of in their kingdom, and that's not what they're there for. They are there to do that, but not fully. They're there to do that in a trade way of mutual care, of mutual support. Not, okay, come into my kingdom, I'll take care of you and fix everything and make life good. Okay? That's not the right way. Not just to integrate them to the kingdom, but to learn to share those kingdoms. But growing up, this person wasn't in a place where kingdoms were being shared. The kingdom of that authority figure Usually, usually it's the father more often than not in this case, because the Sun and Venus both represent the father in astrology. Okay, Jaimini takes Venus as the father, and then other systems take the Sun. Okay, so it's usually father issue. So, the, um, you know, that authority figure didn't want to share kingdoms, didn't want to say, oh, your kingdom's beautiful, share with me your kingdom. It was like, my kingdom or else. Okay, and sometimes that was given very dramatically, other times it was a very subtle thing. It could just be a disinterest, where the child goes to share their kingdom, and that authority figure just is disinterested, or says, oh, that's great, Johnny, but doesn't really get excited about it, doesn't really give a shit about it, okay? So either way, the person decides they're going to build their own kingdom, and that's their focus. They get focused on their own kingdom. Essentially, they do the same thing that that authority figure ended up doing. That authority figure was so focused on their kingdom that they couldn't see other people's kingdoms. And then the person with the sun Venus decides to do the same. To not realize that everyone has a kingdom to share with. Instead thinks, my kingdom, my kingdom, bring it together. Um, it's actually really funny that I've got a sun Venus conjunction. Thankfully, I actually have Mercury there too. But it's really funny because um, I've been playing a lot of chess the last year with my son and, and my family, but especially with my son. and um, He just tears me apart most of the time. I mean, he, the things he does to me aren't even funny anymore, you know. And I've been thinking, why do I lose at chess? What's my, why do I suck so hard at this game? Because you've got two kingdoms, right? And you're going to engage in this battle. And the funny thing that happens is that I'm so focused on what I'm doing, what I'm going to do. I'm so focused on what I'm going to do. I don't take the time to focus on what he's trying to do to me. <laughs> and so next thing you know, I'm dead. You know, next thing you know, I lose. Every once in a while, I'll play a really, really good game where I'm just really clear and I'll just move every piece right and I'll beat him. That's like one out of eight games or one out of six games at most, okay? But usually it's the same thing. I'm so focused on my kingdom, my guys, my men, that I'm not paying enough attention to his kingdom, his gods, his men. So I figure when I can beat him 50% of the time, 
then my Mercury has stepped in and helped my agitated Venus come be better. Okay, so it's just a it's a really funny thing to think about this how we can get so focused with this Sun agitating Venus and even the Venus starved by Sun and Leo. We get so focused on our kingdom, our kingdom, our kingdom, that we don't see other people's kingdoms. Even in something like a chess game or death, pay attention, a lot of attention, half attention to them. You know? And so, anyway, just an example from my own life and seeing how I do this on, on a very superficial level, on something that doesn't even matter, but how it's like really makes a huge difference. So you can imagine in the rest of our lives when we're dealing with real people, it's not a game. If we're not paying attention to what they're actually doing, what they actually are bringing with them, we can't have a good engagement with them. Okay? And so the person with the sun Venus, who grew up with an authoritative figure that there was no kingdom but their kingdom, the sun Venus person usually decides, I'm going to really focus on my kingdom. Okay, And for some reason they have to focus on their kingdom and build their kingdom. But eventually they need to do that. They need to experience that for themselves because they were so unable to have their kingdom growing up. But eventually they need to realize they need to share their kingdom with other people openly, honestly, across the board with acceptance. And it's about sharing kingdom rather than engulfing the kingdom. You know, It's kind of like... Um, countries used to do. You know, one country would want to take another country over and make it my country and my political rules and da 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 da. That's stupid. Why not just, hey, let's see what your country has and my country has and let's see what kind of things we can trade. That's healthy. But this idea of I'm just going to have a bigger kingdom by overwhelming another person's kingdom because a person can only see the merits of their kingdom, that's a Sun Venus pathology. <laughs> okay? Um, Okay, now when you saw so I was saying, you'll see kids that they have this authority figure, like I'm remembering these charts where the father has a Sun Venus conjunction, and oh my God, that they have a militant father, right? Okay, and this person went against their father's wishes and ultimately built their own kingdom, completely built their own kingdom. But then they did the very same thing, where it was my kingdom and my kingdom only, they couldn't see anyone else's kingdom. And this person had children. Okay, one of the kids has a son Venus and decided to build their kingdom. The other person has a Saturn Venus. They responded to the father in a very different way. So do keep in mind that, and in that person's chart, Saturn is the tenth lord, which is the father, and Venus is again one of the karakas of father. Okay, so one of the planets representing the father. So. They responded to the same upbringing in a Saturn-starving Venus way, which we'll talk about in another video. So what I'm saying is, you will find this chain happening through the genetics. It's really important with these difficult avashtas and the good avashtas. If you can, see the family's chart, see the parents' chart, see the other kids' chart. Try to understand the whole family history and what kind of tensions were going on and how the person adapted to it and so on. So. We see a father type affliction to Venus in both charts because the, they had a father who was difficult, both these people, but they responded to it differently. One person has Saturn Venus, one person has um, Sun Venus. All right? So um, that's one of the really interesting things of astrology. And you'll often see that, especially with if you see a Sun infliction in one person's chart or a Saturn's affliction. You, likely you'll see that same affliction by Sun or Saturn in a parent's chart or sibling's chart. Because Sun and Saturn, Saturn's a child of the Sun, right? So what the Sun can do, Saturn can do, and so on. So don't always say, oh, I bet you have Sun-Venus conjunction for ten generations back. No, you might have a Sun-Venus and a Saturn-Venus and a Saturn-Venus and another Sun-Venus. You know, but there'll be some parallels. So remember, you can use Sun and Saturn to look for these parallels, okay? Um, because these are the two ways. One person responds to the to the to that stress in a fiery sun way. The other one in a cold Saturn way. It's essentially, there's always two ways we can respond to stress: very actively 
or very passively. Active way is the sun way, passive way is the Saturn way. Okay? Okay, so the person with this avashta will have suffered, you know, tyranny in their life. You know, this is my kingdom and only my kingdom, somewhere along the line. And they will, um, and lots of times you won't notice it. I got a friend I, I grew up with and his family life always seemed really great, you know, um, from my point of view. Um, his father was always sort of quiet and definitely, you know, my friend and his sister and mother and his, his brother were kind of a little more, you could tell they were having more fun together than, than with that, you know, but it wasn't like, it looked like a big issue. And he had a Sun-Venus conjunction and, um, you know, I found out later that this person had no respect for his father and that he, um, he just, um, I started criticizing his father and that everything his father has done is wrong and da 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 da. He just basically gone to this place. My father's kingdom sucks, you know, because he had to at some point step away from that and step into his own kingdom. Okay, so the Sun Venus person always has to step away into their own kingdom, but the problem is in doing that, they're inflicting tyranny or you know this idea that you have to fit into my kingdom on everyone in their lives. Okay, and so it doesn't create happy relationships. Venus is, it's not a nice thing to have Venus with the Sun or Venus in Leo. It doesn't create happy relationships. Alright, so the very thing that happened to them, they're afflicting on other people. Okay, they're afflicting on other people. Because remember, with every Avashta, it happens to us, we do it to other people. Then we also attract people who do it to us. So if you have this avashta, you're going to attract people into your life that don't see your kingdom, don't see important things in your kingdom, don't respect certain things you have to do. Okay? It might, they might not be doing it because of a Sun-Venus conjunction. They may be doing it because of something else. Okay? Maybe their seventh lord is Mercury and it's joined with the Sun. Or maybe their seventh lord is Jupiter and it's joined with the Sun. So... They're controlling their partner. Because remember, the agitation, the sun conjunction always is controlling. It always at the end tries to dictate things to make sure everything works okay. And in trying to dictate things, everything fails. And then you get frustrated. I tried everything, I did everything right, and it failed. That's the agitation effect. And finally, a person is doing the same thing to themselves. So, with the sun Venus starvation, and especially a Sun Venus agitation, a person is forcing themselves to conform to their vision of the kingdom. They're not light, they're not loose, they're not open to life. They're like, this is the constitution of my kingdom, this is how I have to be. I don't get to amend this, I don't get the Fifth Amendment, I don't get any amendments to this constitution. A healthy kingdom is in a constant state of evolution and change, right? according to the need and what it encounters from the outside. Venus are the most valuable things you're going to encounter from the outside. They're the things that are coming from the outside that you need to flourish. And the Sun Venus person goes, oh, but that's not in my, that's not in my constitution. My kingdom doesn't allow that. And your inner voice is saying, yes, you need this. If you do this, you will heal. If you do this, you will get the money that you need that's causing you stress, whatever. But you look at your constitution and it says, no, this isn't allowed in my kingdom. So we do the same thing to ourselves. We exhibit tyranny on ourselves. We don't allow ourselves to, to change the kingdom, to live outside the kingdom. And so as long as we're doing that, we'll attract people into our lives that don't accept our kingdom and our needs. Because we're not accepting our needs and the needs of the kingdom to adapt, change, and grow, and to be amended improve basically according in respect to our growth and maturity okay so the sun venus agitation people and also the venus and leo people are so stuck in how they're doing things i mean we must be one of the most stuck people you know sure saturn can really stuck people too in some ways but they're very stuck and this is the only thing that's good this is the only thing that's valuable 
this is the only thing that's worthwhile. Because remember, good, valuable, worthwhile, these are Venus words. Okay? This is the only thing that's I'm going to entertain. And we need to entertain everything. Every time it comes, we need to entertain it. Through our inner voice that says yes or no. You know? The same person can show up on our door knocking every day and say the same thing to us. And we just say yes or no in accordance with our inner voice. One day we might surprise ourselves and also they say yes. And now it's finally time to make that connection. Okay? You never know. That's the beauty of life. Okay? But when you're on your kingdom with the sun Venus, with the sun starving or sun agitating Venus, you already think you know how your kingdom has to be. You already think you know the kind of people that can come into your kingdom. You already think you know the right things your kingdom needs. But you don't. You'll only figure it out as you encounter it and then you respond with your inner voice. Yes, come into my kingdom and share with me. Or no, go find someone else's kingdom to share with because mine doesn't need that. Okay? But instead of doing that, it's like, this is how the kingdom works. We're tyrannical, we're controlled, we only allow certain things, and we don't budge. Okay? So, you'll oftentimes see people be really hard on themselves and what they allow in their lives when you get the Sun-Venus conjunction. Okay? Um, you'll also see people sometimes becoming spiritually intolerant too. One person I know with this conjunction, um, Venus is the ninth lord in this case, okay? They, um, they're, like, they just over their life, they became a more and more rigid Christian fundamentalist. Okay? Again, where this is how the kingdom is. Okay? And then, I've known this person forever. They, they never talk to me because I'm an astrologer. They talk to me because of old times, you know, from my teenage years, from knowing me from back then. And, you know, their, their wife wanted to divorce them. And this person did not want to get divorced. Okay? Because they were sure they were going to go to hell if they got divorced. So they're fighting their wife, who they don't even want to be around with anymore, to not get divorced because they think they're going to hell. And he finally was like, he finally called me, my wife's divorced me, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm like, well, if she really, really doesn't want to be with you, you've tried everything, then why would you want to be with her? He goes, I don't know, but am I going to go to hell? Do you think I'm going to go to hell? <laughs> you know, that was the question. That was the concern. So this is really hard stuff to put on yourself, you know? This idea that you're going to certainly go to hell because somebody else wants to divorce you. It's like you're not even divorcing them. They're getting rid of you. You didn't cheat on them. They cheated on you, and now you're going to hell. That's hard to be that way to yourself, okay? But that's the Sun Venus person. They're that tyrannical on themselves. Okay, especially that agitation, because that agitated sun, it's tough, it's hard, it's mean, it's a cruel planet. Sun in Leo is much more light on itself. The sun in Leo doesn't have that controlling pressure on itself. But it just has this idea that, oh, you want to be with me, you have to conform to my kingdom. If you don't fit my kingdom, I don't want you. You know, very exclusive when you got a sun Venus or sorry, Venus and Leo um, starved Venus, okay? Um, so they're so exclusive, this makes them alone, <laughs> okay? Nobody is good enough to join their club. Nobody will fit into their kingdom just right. They're, they're either too old, too this, too short, whatever, okay? Um, too poor, whatever. There's always some reason that people don't get to join your club when you have Venus and Leo, okay? So hopefully, when we see this sun agitation or the sun starvation, um, it's a real issue of why relationships don't work out well. Again, Mercury is the biggest, most first likely planet to help Venus. Saturn aspect will help. Um, we'll talk about all those delights later. Venus in good dignity, you know, and friends, in, sorry, in own sign or exaltation will help. But this is a common, common thing. Not enough tolerance for the people we share with. That's basically what it comes down to. You know? Um, you know, it's like we think that when we start sharing with someone, they have to fit in an unnatural way. 
And, um, and that's not how it is. We, we have to remember every person is their own kingdom. And we're doing international trade here. That's a healthy Venus. It's international. It's full of surprises. A few, full of strange customs that I don't want anything to do with. But maybe 10 years later I'll actually want to do that. You know, That's how real life is. We need to take time. And if a person's right for us, if our inner voice says yes to someone, that means that person has something to offer us that we need. And lots of times it's something that's sort of, I would never want that, I would never do this, I would never allow that. And then we find ourselves going, seeing the merits of that thing and through that association growing and evolving. So people, you know, Venus people are the people that bring value into our lives, the things we need. A lot of what we need are the basics. I need a roommate. I need someone to share my house with. I, you know, I need someone to make my bills easier to pay. I need someone to go have fun with and so I can relax in this world. And all I do is work, work, work. So I need to chill every once in a while. So I need to go have some fun. You know, we need these really concrete things. But we also need these things that spur our growth from other people. You know, we need these new ways of doing things. We need to experience other possibilities. And we do that through the important people we let into our lives. Our inner voice knows which ones of those people are right. Okay? Our outer voice has no, our, our minds, our brains, the, the ideas we built on our conviction, the, the rules we wrote on our constitution. None of those um, know. None of those are good filters. And if we use those filters because Venus is in Leo or Venus is with the Sun, we're going to say yes to the wrong people and no to the right people. And as a result, um, the foundation of our life, which is always the people, the people in our life are the biggest foundation in our life. That foundation won't be correct for us. They won't work for us. They won't provide the foundation to grow on, to grow a healthier, better, more abundant life on. And again, the Venus stage of this is worth keeping, I have to keep it, and I have to take care of it because I need this long term. The other problem with this agitation or with this um, starvation is that the person, because they're so focused on their kingdom, they won't see all the time what other people need in their kingdom. Because they only know that people have a kingdom. They're so focused on their kingdom, they forget other people have kingdoms too. So they need to remember to take care of other people's kingdom. Okay. They, do they think they're doing that? Oh, they really think they're doing it. But what they're really doing is, they're taking care of that person in the context of their kingdom. They need to take care of that person in the context of their kingdom. I know I said the same thing. What I mean by that is, the Sun Venus person, or the Venus and Leo person, is responsible and takes care of that person in the context of how the Sun Venus person believes the kingdom should be. Instead of, taking care of that person in the context of how that person's own kingdom actually operates. Okay? So it makes it really hard for real sharing to go on. Okay? Because real sharing goes on when we really see the other person's kingdom. And again, the best planet to help with this is Mercury. Because Mercury is that friendly planet that is curious about the other person's kingdom, is watching the other person's kingdom, and so on. So, so this happening in the signs of Mercury or with Mercury involved um, with Venus, conjunct Venus, delights Venus and helps the person have more fun with other people's kingdom. So then they're 50-50. You know, they still have to work through the Sun, but they have the Mercury. And that's the most common one you're going to see. Sun, Mercury, Venus. All together. Um, it's a prevalent combination in the horse. When you see it, you'll see that all the time. Okay. All right, enough said on that. I hope everyone understands that agitation of Venus um, and gives you a better idea of what you need to shift in your brain to handle it. Okay, and, and start responding to your inner voice about the people instead of responding to the constitution of your perceived kingdom. And also, to stop forcing yourself to live according to your constitution and write amendments to your constitution as your inner voice says, yes, add this, or, and yes, throw that rule out, okay? Because 
you know, life is not meant to be stuck and static. And this can be a very, very stuck combination. Oh, I see people with Sun, Venus, and Venus and Leo, they can be stuck for so long. You wouldn't think so. Like, they're not terrible things. You know, when you think of stuck, you're thinking Saturn, Moon, Saturn, Sun. You expect them to be stuck. But you don't expect Sun, Venus people or Venus and Leo people to be stuck. But if you look at their lives, you'll say, wow, there's something where they're really stuck. And it's because they won't amend their constitution in accordance to what they really need, to what their inner voice is saying. They're hard on themselves. They're tough on themselves, especially the sun agitating Venus. Okay? All right, enough on that. Thank you.